well, let's let's, uh, let's uh, should we bring Nick in? Should we want? You let's bring, bring him in? in. All right, Nick. Let me get you in. It's here. Not just that he can't adjust. He has one way he wants to run the offense. Right there. Good Look. offensive coordinators know many ways to run an offense. All right, Nick, can you hear us? I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, Nick. There he is, Nick. Um, How are you guys doing? Help us out. We need lots of answers. I'm How sure much you candy have- did you eat? I haven't even finished my first thing of uh, Sour Patch Kids. Oh, you're so more candy. healthy. Uh, All right, <laughs> come on, Nick. Start with <laughs> live a little. Start with loose, Nick. What do you have to say for himself tonight? Well, I, I asked him straight up why only DJ Moore got one target in the second half. Like a guy like that shouldn't be getting one target, regardless of what the score is. And he said, "Well, I have to go b- watch the film. Maybe they blanket him with coverage over the top, but he has to really go back and watch that." It's like you don't know what they're doing to take away DJ Moore. Ooh. Like I don't like that answer, you guys. Like Tyson Bajans talked about how. You know, that's a guy that he thinks is a world-class athlete, one of the best in the world. You need to find ways to get him to the ball. And I asked Tyson Bajan the same exact question, how he only gets one target. And he told me that, you know, it's never a good thing. And how the game flows is what something Iberflus also said. But there were a couple that he could have given DJ Moore an opportunity in that second half. And, you know, it's not the only reason why this game got away. But I think it's, you know, one of the part of the many, you know, issues with what's going on in this current Bears team. Yeah, I have to look at the film as an acceptable answer on one play where you haven't been able to see a replay yet. It's not an acceptable answer to explain something that happened for an entire half of the game. you got to be able to see things from upstairs, get feedback from your coaches, make adjustments. That's a – I agree with you, Nick. That's a concerning answer. How about the interception? Uh, Did did Tyson Bajan provide any answers on uh, what happened with that interception where it looked like he was targeting DJ Moore, even though it also sort of looked like an overthrow of Mooney? Yeah, he said there was just some miscommunication uh, on that play that ultimately led to, you know, what looked like just a a clear giveaway to, uh, you know, to the defense there. But he said there was just some miscommunication. When I was here at the stadium, I watched Darnell Mooney, and he went over and talked – Justin Fields spoke to him. Then Mooney went over and talked to DJ Moore for a little bit. So – Obviously, something was just not right on that play, and that's why it looked like it was such a, you know, a clear giveaway. But yeah, there was just some miscommunication on that one. That's what I figured was going on there. Day, hey, back to Flus before we get too far away from Nick. Did he say anything along the lines of "I did not have my team ready to play, and our fundamentals make me sick"? Well, he said when you bring up the word fundamentals, there, Mark. And he, Eber Flus was asked like, "Why all the missed tackles?" And he he went back to not. Not that the team wasn't ready, but, you know, it it does take the fundamentals. But, you know, you hear Tyreek Stevenson in the locker room saying that, you know, they've been working constantly on the fundamentals. But on a Sunday night, it it didn't show that, you guys. There were were missed tackles on all levels of this defense, defensive line, linebacker, secondary. So, you know, that's what Iberflus identified as the, the one thing that, maybe resulted in the missed tackles, but the fundamentals, guys, they've been working on the fundamentals since week one. Like it's, it hasn't at this point, something's not connecting between the players, the coaching, and obviously what we're seeing on game days. So that was the one thing that he kind of mentioned for why maybe the missed tackles were so frequent in this one. It's like when he said earlier this season that they were working with uh, Edmonds on lowering his pad level. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, you spent $80 million on a linebacker? You think he tackles too high? That's right. not good. Like, what? Uh, there's, some, there's just bizarre stuff like that. Um, what else from real, these uh, defensive guys? I know you talked to – or go ahead, Nick. Yeah, real quick, I just want to go back to Bajan because I asked him um, – I don't know what you guys thought about the fourth and two play where Bajan, they're on the opposite hash, throwing to Darrington Evans for you know a play where you need to have it. Um, Bajan was saying that they doubled up DJ Moore on that play and that D- that Tyson just needs to get the ball out there quicker, get the timing there for Evans, who has a lot of space. But to be fair, if they're doubling up DJ Moore, I don't know if like ter- uh, Darrington Evans is your best second option for a fourth and two, got to have a type of play. So no. I just feel like the design on that one is just weird in itself and you're targeting Evans uh, on a very crucial part in the game. I mean, that's something Hogue's been harping on while we watch these games is when the fullback is your first option. You know, Evans, you're saying there is your second option in crucial moments. Too often do you see that. That being said, though, I do agree. He's got if he gets that ball out faster, it's a first down. And instead, Mm -hmm. it was almost an interception. And regardless, it was a turnover on downs. 
Did Nick, did Nick just, just were you drinking a beer there, Nick? Are you are you enjoying the after after beers? Is that what's happening? Hey, they they have beers over here. Patrick Finley's like, Nick, you know, maybe it's because I'm a little older, but I'm gonna take this beer back to my hotel room. I'm like, you do you, Finley. I'm gonna drink this <laughs> coffee and you know get this work done. Yeah, coffee. Okay, so you're not drinking a beer. Hey, okay. hey wait. And Pat's saying he's not gonna drink the beer until he gets back to the hotel room. Yeah, I think I think he's gone. I mean, for oh, I think he's really, in the hotel. really likes to just strip down and oil himself up and then start drinking in the hotel room. That's what Whoa. I heard. Wow. Whoa. Well, I'm just backing up right. Well, just backing bears up right. after dark all of a sudden. Hey, <laughs> it is uh, 11.42 p.m. Hey, yeah. hey, Nick, did Bajit look defeated? So he as was in his locker room, you guys. Um, so he was in his locker. Well, in the locker room, it's kind of it's a weird it's a weird structure. I'll say that for for SoFi. But Bajan was the only guy where you know usually the quarterbacks in to be at. He just sat there, sat there looking down. Kind of he has some bracelets that he was looking at. He no one talked to him. No one went over there. And then obviously went on to do his um his press conference. But he he did look like a guy that you know just they lost thirty you know thirty to seven like or whatever the score ended up being. But it. it it looked like it weighed on him when he was just sitting there at his locker by himself, Carm. But um, I think he, he handled it well in the press conference and did the best he could um, after such a, a devastating defeat. Our GM here, so he looked as deflated as uh, Carm has for most of the show. Uh, uh, that's well, where they, I was look, trying to go with yeah, that. Yeah. Look, yeah. if we were trying to turn this season around, they needed to win tonight, and the, and the backup quarterback – my guy, TV seventeen, needed to play well, and it just didn't happen. So it's it's a, it's it's not a good night for the Bears. Ain't, ain't a good and, night for anybody. And Carm, yeah, um, and me. Question from Jake Flanagan, Nick. He's wondering about the uh, uh, missed tackle that TJ Edwards had on Eckler that led to the touchdown. Yeah, and really, um, TJ Edwards. He kind of he was speaking for himself, but he didn't play up to his standards. And also, he said back to the fundamentals. And if we're, you know, connecting dots here, like if you're going back to the fundamentals, the fundamentals are not being executed here on Sunday. So, yeah, he knows he didn't play um, his best game. And it was that missed tackle that led to a touchdown. The touchdown before the half that Tyreek Stevenson missed on the tight end. So these kept occurring and occurring, but he definitely wasn't um, happy about how he played tonight. I mean, to me, the good medicine for Tyson Bajant last week was a good run game. And, I, and maybe yeah. it's just as simple as this game getting out of hand quickly. But still, I mean, 17-7 to 7 at one point right before the half, trying to establish a run. They really couldn't do that here tonight. Uh, did you get any reasoning why they couldn't really establish a run and, and play ball time of possession and ball control a little more? Yeah, Greg, I'm glad you asked that because I got a chance to ask Cole Komet about he, – he was talking about the physicality not being here tonight. And I asked him, why Why didn't that carry over from a, a very physical game the Bears played against the Raiders where they were able to run the football like you were just mentioning, Greg? And he just said they didn't, it didn't come with us from Chicago. He thinks that is their identity on offense. And we they didn't carry it um, into this game. And he said that he they should be carrying that physicality every single game they go to. But he didn't, he didn't feel like it was there tonight. And so I think that was telling with how the – one, how this game played out, but – that run never got established. So it was it's it's interesting that I think Cole was saying on our you know CHO Bears podcast that it seemed like the the Raiders were a little jet lagged or a little tired going from West Coast over to Chicago. I wonder, you know, did the Bears feel something similar? But he just didn't feel like the physicality was there at all in this matchup tonight against the Chargers. Nick, did uh did Flues have anything to say about that first play of the game where play got whistled dead and probably shouldn't have been? Um, so I, I got a little bit late into the Flues presser. I don't know if he was asked about that, but he wasn't asked for the portion that I was there. Cole Komet was asked about the play that got stopped at for, for him on the three-yard reception, and he said that he wished they'd let, let that play go, but yes. he yes. said that there was a situation his rookie year against the Saints where I guess they kept the play going and he ended up fumbling, but you know they should have blown the, the play dead. But really, he said they're doing that, the refs, to, to protect the players so they don't get those kill shots. But, yeah, it seemed like in this one, you guys, they were just the refs were a little early on the whistle, and there were some big plays that could have happened. And the one for Cole Komet, they end up do getting that touchdown later. But, yeah, there were some opportunities missed there. I do remember that play Cole's talking about where they probably should have blown it dead. He's mm -hmm. being pushed straight backwards toward the sideline then ended up fumbling because he's always fighting for – Yard. By the way, that's one thing Cole has improved. Early on in his career, he had fumble issues. He had drop issues. 
He wasn't making tough catches, and now he's pretty damn reliable. Cole played a yeah, great. There's a, there's a nice play, guys, on the right um, right portion of the field where the DB goes low, and it's just like a standstill. And then Colt just keeps moving the legs and goes to get the first down for, you know, Bajant there. But, yeah, I think you definitely have seen Cole kind of add that to his game, which is obviously great to see. All right, Nick, anything else before we let you go? No, guys, but if you don't if you don't hear from me, it's because I definitely got locked in this stadium because I'm going to tell you, coming up back to his press box, it was kind of a journey for me, Johns, a couple of the other uh, media guys. So if you don't hear from me, just know I'm still in the stadium somewhere. Well, you got plenty of candy up there to eat. <laughs> Nick, you could survive for a few days up there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Candy and beer. Let's candy do it. Candy and beer. It's Halloween. Nick, tell Tyson Bajan if you see him, it's going to be all right and keep his head up, okay? <laughs> I I will definitely tell him that if I see him. Give him a hug and whisper in his ear, and if, secret Bajan. And if you see Luke Getzey, please ask him to cross off the Trent Taylor end around play. Yeah, yeah, do that. Oh too. my God. That what was that, you guys? Let's run the end around to Khalil Mack when Larry Borm is supposed to be blocked. What the f- oh my god, that pissed me off right, right from the very beginning. Yeah, second play of the game, <laughs> right there at the top of the script that they walked through all week. That's the one they wanted. Let's do it. Taylor is <laughs> gonna run over Mac. We're gonna be <sighs> Bears. Why? Nick, good stuff. Thank we you guys. You. I'll see ya. I'll hopefully see you when I see you. You'll get out of there, hopefully, by the time your flight leaves. Um, all right, Nick. We'll be following, following you. Follow him on Twitter, at Nicholas Moriano. All his written coverage up at allchgo.com. He'll have plenty of that coming from Los Angeles. We all city like the mayor.